See, so we, we got to get away from telling folk what they can't do when they come to the Lord. You know, say praise the Lord. Say long, long time ago. Yeah, when I joined one church, they told me I couldn't go to the movies. And I like movies, man. They told me I couldn't go to the movies. Told, 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 told my wife she couldn't wear no pants. You know, I liked it in pants. That kind of stuff. Yeah, I liked it. I liked it. I liked it in pants. But now they can tell me I can't wear no, she can't wear no pants, you know, and it's like, then where's the fun? I'm not living saved. You can't do nothing. You know, you can't dance. I, Tim, I couldn't listen to no jazz. No makeup. You know, some of us need makeup. No, I mean men and women. I, I'm not, okay, 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 okay. Let me come back, let me go back. No, some of us do, you know, you like, I mean, you feel more comfortable with it. We'll edit that one out later. Amen. Praise the Lord. My wife taught me these things. <laughs> ah, so, 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 for some reason, some people feel like, and I'm not saying all are like that, they feel like coming to Jesus is boring. Okay, so, so, so uh, what you saw today on the platform here today was people glorifying God with dance but having a good time doing it. Yeah. Look at your name and say, you can have a good time being saved. Yeah. And, and, and it, listen, it's, and it's always reassuring that you say, reassuring to know that you're saved and not going to hell. Yeah. Amen. You got fire insurance. Now think about it, meditate on it. That makes you feel real good. You enjoy your, you enjoy your house more when you got it insured. You enjoy your new car more when you know it's insured. Amen? You can enjoy Jesus more or life more when you know you're saved. Amen? Look at your name and say, I know I'm saved. Amen. So, 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 I, I can have fun and live this life. And I have fun. Look at your name and say, you can have some fun. Okay, you can go to the movies. Okay, y'all ain't got to tell them that. I tell them. You ain't got, you can go to the movies. You know. Well, you saw dance, so you can dance, okay? When we go to marriage tr retreat, we dance. They be doing the, what's, wait a minute, y'all got to help me with this. The, the, the shuffle, the, what, they, what you call it? The hustles, plural, the hustles, okay? I see, had pastors out there doing the hustles. Got good at it. Yeah. Yeah, Dorothea can go. She's usually one of the first out there. She is, because she can go. Amen. So I was a little timid because I hadn't danced in a little while, but you know, I could roll. But I just hadn't done it in a while. My, 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 my knees were, were stiffening up and that kind of stuff. So, so, so I got out there and I, I had me some fun. Okay, at our marriage retreat, we had some fun. Yeah. Amen. It's not a boring time. So if you haven't signed up, you need to go. Sign up. Amen. So, and listen to this. To have joy, peace, and prosperity in my life, it requires consecration on my part. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. It, 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 it requires consecration on my part. Now, you can't have fun if you're torn. Okay. You know, I have to bring it down where everybody can understand. You can't, you can't have fun and you got two partners. <laughs> no, you can't, you can't have fun and you deal with two, two women. Uh-uh, because see, while you at one, you worried about the other one. You know, in our days, they don't stay at home. They be riding around. <laughs> <laughs> they be riding around looking, boy. You, 
<laughs> Can I get an amen with me? They're going to find you. Amen. And you can't go out of town because me and Lady G be out of town. We'll see you too. <laughs> so that's in the back of your mind while you're enjoying yourself. You got to make up a lie to go home with so you won't be found out. That ain't fun. Okay. Amen. So you, you got to learn how, you, you know, in order to live and have the joy of, of God working in you on an on the, on the, uh, 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 everyday basis to, to, to be at peace. I mean, real peace. And to prosper or do well or increase in life, you, you, you got to consecrate yourself on your part. Amen? Uh, 2 Timothy, Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. Let me get away from that. I was getting in trouble with you. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified, and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Amen? God is telling us here that if we consecrate ourselves to him, for his use, yeah, he'll guarantee you're going to have a good time. Amen? Say praise the Lord. Look at your name and say, I want to have a good time. Amen? So how do I posture myself or consecrate myself to live a kingdom life? Now, in the Old Testament, they, sec they, they, they consecrated a thing by setting it apart for God's purpose, for God's use. And when something was consecrated, there was empowerment given as well. David was consecrated king, remember? And from that day on, the Bible says the spirit of the Lord was with him. Amen. Uh, 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 in the Old Testament, the word consecration or consecration was a ceremonial thing and also somewhat spiritual. It was a ceremonial thing and somewhat spiritual. Now, in the New Testament, we are consecrated, right? Not ceremonially, but spiritually. And it is an individual commitment that we make. Amen? Now, that individual commi commitment that you make now when you consecrate yourself to the Lord means, number one, that I detach myself from things that will interfere with my kingdom walk. Amen. See, it's my responsibility to detach myself from the people, the places, and the things that may impede my walk. Some folk, you got to let go when you consecrate yourself. Because you don't get crazy until you get around them. Hmm? Say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <coughs> I, uh, uh, I've come across people, people I knew in the world, and uh, been pastoring 20 years or more. And uh, I sit down and be talking to them or something, or see them somewhere talking. You know, they're just talking, and they're just blankety blanking. And then they, remind, they remember I'm a, I'm a pastor. Oh, oh, oh. I said, don't, don't try to change now. No, if you're just going, I, I, I can read through all that. I can weed out what I need to weed out. You're just going to be you. <laughs> huh? See, but that's not somebody I can hang out with. Okay. I, 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 my wife, I really don't hang around out with folk. See, there's, there's several reasons why. Now, one of the reasons is I don't want the responsibility to get you where you need to go. Okay. <laughs> no, that, that, can be, that can be quite, you know. And I'm being honest with you. I, I just can't commit to just taking you somewhere and then I'm ready to go and you're still talking. Now, I can take that from my wife. But I can't take that from somebody I ain't married to. When it's time to go, it's time to go. Okay, y'all look at me funny. Say praise the Lord. Say it one more time. But more than that, I'm not going to hang out with anybody that's going to be a challenge for me spiritually. So there are a lot of people I just shy away from. God tells me not to deal with some folk. Amen. There are places that I won't go. Because y'all wouldn't understand. You know, if my car break down next to some, some, some beer joint or, or whatever, 
oh, oh, let's make it even worse, next to a prostitu house of prostitution and the only phone in there, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm just going to walk. Not because I couldn't explain you, excuse me, I couldn't explain you why I was in there. Oh, no, Pastor. Oh, we got to have a meeting. You know, I saw you coming out of, okay, I just went in there to use the phone. Where's your cell phone, Pastor? No, no, using that phone. <laughs> See, so I, I couldn't explain that. So because I've consecrated myself and set myself apart for God's use, there are certain things I just can't do. I mean, my life belongs to him, not me anymore. Say, praise the Lord. There are certain things I can't do no more. See, now this is getting tight because some of y'all, y'all still doing some things, y'all still with some people, y'all still going to some places. But now, there are certain things I just can't do. <sighs> Amen. You know, uh, uh, we, uh, me and AJ, you know, we, 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 we went to Vegas. And, you know, I go for the malls and the, some of the shows, but, uh, man, some out of sight, beautiful, just immaculate malls. One of them looked just like Venice. Got the canal in the middle of it and the boats going down the canal. I mean, it's just out of sight. But I noticed that every, almost everywhere we had to go, he had to walk through these very colorful areas. <laughs> Lights flashing and, you know what I'm talking about? And, you know, people doing this number here. And, right, and people doing, you know, you know what I'm talking about? Y'all know what I'm talking about without me. Saying. See, that's never been a temptation to me. But I can see where if it was somebody that used to do that, it would be. So for you, you may not need to be in there. Say praise the Lord. Okay, okay. My, okay, say long, long time ago. You know, when a dollar bill meant a whole lot. You know, I'm at Delta College, and I saw some guys playing some, what, tunk? And so, so I had about $3, Jackie, and I'm going to play tunk. Now, I, I had been practicing a little bit. And so I went to sit down. Now, I'm not a gambler. So I sit down, and uh, they put a dollar in the pot. And I, kind of, I was kind of re reluctant to throw a dollar in anybody's pot, because I only had three. Okay, and so I put the dollar in the pot. Man, that dollar flew away so quick, I was hurt, down to the core. I got up, never went back and sat down again. That's the quickest way to lose a dollar, was in tongue. So, so that type of thing, was not what I was dealing with. It wasn't something that I had to really overcome, amen, and stay away from. So some of y'all got to stay away from some, from some things. You got to detach yourself from that brother with the butter in his hair. He, he, put that, he put that real heavy cream up in there, and it just start busting in waves like that. You got, you got to stay away from that. Okay, okay, okay. Amen. Number two. <laughs> Number two, you got to discipline yourself to embrace the kingdom lifestyle. You got to enforce obedience in your life. You got to make yourself do the right thing. It gets easier after a while, I guarantee it, but at first you have to make yourself do the right thing. Okay? It ain't no such thing as the devil made you do it. You did it. And he, was, he just went along for the ride too. Amen. See, I enforced obedience is necessary until behavior is formed. It is my obedience to a thing that forms my behavior. That's it. So in order to do the right thing, I have to obey the right thing, and after a while I develop a behavior for it. So living for God is not hard. It's only hard for you if you're not sold out. It's only hard for you if you have partial obedience. That's when it's only hard for you. Amen. Say praise the Lord. Okay, look at your name and say, you know, some of us need to get off Facebook. Because that's, that's like book face. You... Some of us. Uh, now, now, believers, and I'm talking about to all believers now, a lot of you lack discipline because you like to do what you feel. Yeah, so you lack discipline because you just like to do what you feel. If I feel it, I'm going to do it. I'm grown. I pay the bills. I'm just going to do it. 
It's something I want to do. There's nothing you can tell me about it. I'm going to do it. And I don't like pastor trying to run my home. Hmm? Telling me what to do in my home. He ain't over here. He don't know what's going on. Don't want to be over there. Won't come. No, my job just give you principles. You take those principles and you can work them in your house or not. That's up to you. Say praise the Lord. All right, number three. I'm talking again. Uh, <laughs> all right, number three. To, 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 to stay consecrated, number three. Number one was I got to detach myself. Number two, I must discipline myself. Number three, I got to devote myself. Yeah, I got to devote myself to God with all my heart. I have to dedicate my life to this cause. Amen? I got to dedicate myself to it. I got to develop a passion, just want to do the right thing. I got to get de develop a passion to want to be there. Amen? <coughs> let's, 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 let's ride back in time a little bit. Each of you have your own specific time. But I'm sure there was a time, and it's still going on now, so I ain't picking with nobody. Uh, where, where, where William would walk if he had to to get to Roberta. I see it. I hear amen and nothing. Maybe he always had a car. There was a time when there was nothing that would stop you from getting to Machete. Am I right? There's a time and place where, where y'all gotten so involved with one another, wasn't married yet, you know, in love, where you do what you had to do to be together. Am I right? So what I'm saying is that there's a time where you started to devote yourself to one another. Right? Say praise the Lord. Huh? You dedicated your life for the pursuit of your baby. Can I get an amen? amen. Y'all know my story. Huh? I got, sir, I'd like to take a couple minutes to tell you how much I was dedicated to this woman here. See, back then we didn't have two way, three way, we only had one way. The phones, I mean, because if you couldn't get through, it was just a busy signal. Had a real I bad ice storm out. Heavy on the, the ice was heavy on the, uh, the lines. I stayed on 9th and Perkins. She stayed on 11th and 5th. Okay? The cars wouldn't go through all that. I had a car. But this time, it was of no use. So I kept trying to call. I could not get through. Mike, my heart was pounding. There was a heaviness on me because I couldn't see my baby. Hmm? Couldn't call her. Because usually at that time, I was over there. I was over there until mama told me I had to leave. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, am I right? I stayed there until a mama, she come in the French door and say, okay, Ronnie, time to go. <laughs> I'd get up and go. <laughs> That's right. Praise the Lord. So, 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 I struck, I put on some galoshes, a heavy coat. Had some gloves and a hat. And, and the ice, it had rained over the snow and then it froze up. So it is a thick covering over the snow where you can walk on top of the snow. So I'm out walking. I'm going to see my baby. And every now and then my foot would drop through the ice. Kaboom. <laughs> huh? I lift myself up. <laughs> Keep walking. Kaboom. Uh-huh. <laughs> Kaboom. And so it took longer for me to get there, but it didn't matter. The time didn't matter. I was devoted to her by then. Yeah. Say praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. Now this is going somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was devoted to her then, man. Hey, I, I just could not go without seeing her. So I got over there. Now it was only one, two, three, four, four blocks away. But it took me about an hour to get there. You know, I had to run from a couple of dogs. <laughs> I, I was wondering, what are they doing? The thing, my thinking, what are they doing out? 
<laughs> Where's their masters? They should be in the house somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so I got there and I knocked on the back door. I was glad to be there. I'm devoted to her. She came to the door because she was anticipating too. Yeah, she wanted to see her baby too. And so the first thing I, I said wasn't, how you doing, baby? I said, who is on the phone? <laughs> no, I'm trying to get you to see a point. When you first came to God, yeah, yeah. when you started to, to learn about what he had done for you, when you got to the point where you realized what he had sacrificed for you, you developed a devotion for him. You know what? Nothing would stop you from coming to church. Nothing would stop you from prayer, but something happened over time. And you fell out of that realm of devotion to God. You got to get it back. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to get it back. See, what's happened is that you got away from consecrating yourself unto the Lord. You started consecrating yourself onto your stuff. Say praise the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, we got to get back. Number four, we must depend on God for strength to live this life. Yeah, I mean, I'm de I, look, I, I am, I am uh, dependent on God to empower me to live this life. I got to have him in my life. That's the only way I'm going to survive. That's the only way I'm going to live this life. And frankly, for me, there's no other life. There's no other life. <sighs> Amen. Say praise the Lord. Say praise the Lord again. So I have to develop, I must have a kingdom consciousness, lifestyle. And that means I got to be holy and I must be consecrated and set apart for the Lord and dedicate myself. 